So nothing too bad really in either player's prize. I don't think uh, either will miss anything too much. A couple supporters maybe, but we'll draw into those once some knockouts start to be taken. And here we go, the game is underway. Shadow Rider Calyrex V on the side of Connor Finton and an Arceus V from Alberto. Yeah, one interesting, one interesting thing to note about this Shadow Rider V is it has two very excellent attacks, but that first one in Shadow Mist could be very strong at limiting Alberto's start to get those Trinity Novas off. It prevents any stadiums or special energies from being played that turn, and that is very solid. So if Alberto can find that first double turbo energy this turn, he'll put himself in a lot better spot. That being said, there are tons and tons of disruption cards when it comes to energy in Connor's deck. Yeah, Connor plays the full four crushing hammers and two fan of waves, which is a great set of cards to be playing when Arceus is so popular because this deck is so dependent on getting an energy drop on turn one so that you can become an Arceus V-Star on turn two, get another energy, and start using Trinity Nova right away. Looks like level ball. Going to go ahead and grab that Sobble. Wants to get those set up. Typical Inteleon engine line stuff. Get your Sobbles out, get them evolved, and play from there. As uh, it's going to be important to find that turn one energy attachment, like we see with a lot of these Arceus decks. Has the second Sobble at minimum. Can get that in, uh, down into play. Can't exactly see what else is in the hand for Alberto, but. I have to imagine, again, energy attachment, and you're pretty much set how you want. Does find the dark energy, but a Shadow Mist here will pretty much guarantee that there is no attack next turn from an Arceus V-Star. Uh, is not playing anything like that Melanie mm -hmm. to accelerate energy that we see some yeah, of there. Only has one basic water energy, so no Melanies included in the list from Alberto. So that could be a good option from Connor, uh, though it does mean you won't attach an energy to Whimsicott, but if you're setting up for a bunch of Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX in play, you can always accelerate and still get off a turn two Trick Wind. Yeah, absolutely, we see that beautiful Plasma Blast Gold Ultra Ball, one of my favorite oh, Plasma artworks. Freeze. Oh, Plasma Freeze, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and discarding another one to go along with it, it looks like. So that's a, a pretty costly discard there from Connor if you're uh, getting rid of another Gold Ultra Ball. You gotta assume the hand has at least some pieces to keep around Definitely. if we're gonna see the, uh, get rid of it. But uh, strong card, very happy to have that back in the standard format. Provides a lot more consistency to these decks, especially these yep. Evolution V-Star and V-Max decks. So very welcomed on my end here. As we are gonna see that play, it looks like, be committed, as, we, as well as a Marty to go ahead and nice. shuffle that hand to the bottom of the deck. It looks like there were a few evolution pieces, but uh, Connor has plenty of ways to search those out, so getting some more cards seems to be the way as... Ooh, let's find the research is the last card. Hammer's looking a little weak besides that. This is going to be a big hammer. crushing hammer. Ooh, tails. That's a big opening, actually, because that means if there is another basic energy, we could see uh, the power up here. That's a huge like. grab, uh, though, from Connor being able to get the second Shadow Rider Calyrex V, because now you can set up for a turn two Trick Wind. Two Underworld Doors plus an energy attachment does lead to a Whimsicott attacking. Yeah, Trinity Charge is going to be a big opening here for Alberto, because that means you flood the board with energy. Right, and exactly what point, you want to do against a disruption yeah, deck like this. So that Crushing Hammer could potentially, uh, it's very early on, but that could be a big Crushing Hammer miss there Definitely. for Connor. As things start over on Alberto's side, five cards now at the top deck to work with off of Marnie. Has options. Uh, there are plenty of consistency cards, level balls, evolution incense, all that. Even a V-Star would be able to grab uh, any piece of that deck. Level ball going to start things off. That could open up the floodgates to get an Arceus V-Star out. There's the potential to get the knockout onto the Shadow Rider V with the Choice Belt in combination with the Double Turbo Energy. However, Double Turbo is not going to be able to get played this turn. So uh, we'll most likely just go for a little bit more of a passive Trinity Charge, power things up. But Shadow Mist is so strong, again, with how powerful Special Energy are. Not as great as that Trick Wind attack that's going to be dealing a lot more damage. And Tools, I would say, a little bit more powerful right now than Stadiums when it comes uh, to a matchup match against up, this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not to say that Stadiums are not powerful right now. We've seen some of the most powerful Stadiums in the history of Pokemon uh, in the last couple of sets. But regardless, uh, actually very interesting line is actually going to opt and evolve evolve this Arcus V-Star. Maybe an oversight not understanding what Shadow Mist does. No, actually just wants to go ahead and start powering this up. So, uh, very interesting line to... It's just kind of what he had game. to do, I believe. Yeah, wants yeah, wow. to research, doesn't want to discard this Arceus because now... Uh, I mean, if you discard the Arceus, you're not going to have access to it there. Uh, oh, there's two Clara in this list, actually. Yeah, it does have that full... Galarian Moltres package along in this list. So kind of just a standard Arceus and Tellian, but without the Melanies and including this dark package instead. Yeah, just to, just to look at that, because this could be a big decision. Do you agree with uh, evolving that there, or would you rather have maybe taken the turn to power up the rest of your board? Yeah, it would have been nice to Trinity Charge, but this is what Alberto has gone with. Is going to Ultra Ball, can get another Arceus into play. 
to set up another attacking option. And, you know, I mean, even if Connor does come in and get a hit, this Arceus isn't going to go down, so you can still Trinity Nova on the next turn. Looks like just eyeing up the options, getting rid of some pieces that are not needed. There are no fighting Pokemon here in Connor's deck, so. Uh, looks like we are actually going to see the Starbirth V-Star power used this turn to find some pieces, so. Uh, imagine maybe he wants to get down another Arceus V-Star, or V, excuse me, uh, pieces. Put that into the hand very quickly, so very set and confident uh, on what needs to be done. As so we're actually going to see oh, the Valerian Moltres see, and the and Energy that's why Switch. We put the Arceus V-Star in play. What? A uh, setup from Alexander. Alberto with that energy switch. I didn't even notice that in this deck list. Just a one of copy, but something you really can set up with the Starburst. Yeah, and the Drizzle will be able to find the choice belt here to get the knockout onto this Shadow Rider V. This is a big opening here for Alberto. Yep, grabs it, puts it in play, a two prize KO. That is a huge swing for Alberto. And if there's an Arceus V to put on the bench, you could accelerate even more energy into play. No, it doesn't look like they have that, but still gets this KO. What a great turn from Alberto, taking the first two prizes. Yeah, we don't really see this energy switch a lot in this deck. It sort of has been used more when we see the Galarian Moltres V in these decks, uh, but proving to be a very excellent piece. You're able to utilize that in tandem uh, with that ability on the Galarian Moltres uh, to really get those energies into play power everything up, and this is an excellent spot. First prize is being taken. You now have a hugely powered up Arceus V-Star. Wow, look at so all those energies. energies. Wow, that is a lot of energies on this Arceus. If this ever goes down, that uh, is a little scary, but I think Alberto's just playing the, uh, the game of Hey, you don't have it yet. You're not, it's going to take you a long time to get through this Arceus. I'm going to put all these energies on it, so your crushing hammers are pretty much ineffective. And Connor just has to boss his orders and pass. And yeah, there was a research in the hand, so pretty interesting choice to go ahead and not play that. But uh, if this turn is bought, this will be a big opening to... Yeah, I think Connor is just arcs. trying to buy a turn because there's so much pressure being put on by this Arceus. So going for a boss, getting the V Max into play, and then if this buys you a turn, you have the research available for the next one. Yeah, scuba netting this Moltres is still fine for Alberto because at that point you get to just reuse the ability to there's just shady dealings throw more energy into play. But yeah, there's the Shady Dealings and Teleon. We are going to see that get grabbed out of the deck. Uh, or two there's trainers, two, rather. Two scoop so. up nets so can pick up this Galarian Moltres from the active. If there's a boss's orders, we could see the and boss. And Connor's just going to scoop it up in game concedes. one. Connor Connor says, there's no way I can come back from this. Your start has been too good. We got to go to a game two. What a turn two from Alberto setting up with the Galarian Moltres. What an insane play. Yeah, what an incredible usage of the Galarian Moltres to get energies into play and energy switch it on to that active. Uh, questioning our play and then all of a sudden showed us, hey, look, look what I got here. I got the options. And that's why Starbirth is such a powerful E-Star power because you could just guarantee those combination pieces that you need. All you need to do is find either the energy switch, the Galarian Moltres, or a single energy. And then from there, you just kind of fill in the pieces and you can put together those turns. And I think that surprise factor really took Connor aback. There was really no other option uh, when you have no deck knowledge. Like, what decks that play Dark Energy right now are playing Energy Switch? There's not a lot. And uh, it took Connor by surprise and ended up uh, costing him the game. And uh, yeah, Alberto's going to go up 1-0 in the set. A great play from Alberto. I really love that inclusion in this deck because one of the problems with Arceus is sometimes you miss the turn one energy drop, and that means you can't get a turn two Trinity Nova off. Some lists that are playing a lot of water energy and Melanie, they can still pull it off by using that supporter to get the acceleration, but Alberto has found a way to play darkness energy and still make it happen by using the energy switch. What a play, very well set up. And Connor just, I think, made a good decision. Conceding really quickly wants to leave plenty of time for a game two and potentially a game three. Yeah, we've seen how a lot of these games can go to time, so it's very important to manage your time, manage your resources. And we're getting into things very quickly here. Players both putting their prize cards out. Ooh, Shadow Rider prized. Crowback could be potentially important. Okay. A bunch of supporters, too. Yeah, Nothing too bad on Alberto's side. The one basic water energy is a little annoying if you ever wanted to attack with Intellion. I'm not sure that it would come up that much in this match matchup because Intellion does just get easily KO'd by the Trick Wind. Yeah, it looks like we are ready to jump into things here. Game two between both these players. Starting that Galarian Moltres, not, not exactly what you want. 
as we do see they capture energy on turn one. A very solid option in this deck is running two of them in the list. Really wants to prioritize getting out these Arceus, getting out these Sobbles, and being able to put together those plays with the help of the Starbirth V-Star power and the Shady Dealing's ability. Yeah, capture energy is one of my favorite cards in the format. I love getting to put it into Pokemon decks because it is just a consistency boost while playing a card that you were already going to play, right? If you're just going to get an energy attachment, you might as well get another Pokemon in play. Love seeing effects like that. Alberto does discard the other Galarian Moltres to get another Sobble. Definitely what you want to do as far as getting Sobbles in play. And now that Moltres being in the discard pile actually becomes a little more accessible because you can get it back with the Clara later on. Yeah, Clara is an excellent option at this point. Later on in the game, playing those two copies, so... Uh, has options down the line, has the terminal energy attachment, and uh, we'll have to see what can be put Ooh. together his hand. Oh, both Whimsicott oh, wow. V-Star being discarded right away, and I don't think Connor has any recovery. I don't think we're going to see a trick win to this game. He's playing that one copy of Ordinary Rod, so it does have oh, the option to yep. get those back, but at this point, with how poor the hand is looking, you really don't have a better of an option. I think you have to go for the Shadow Mist play maybe again and hope that there isn't that combination of cards. Oh, and but, speaking oh, of Ordinary passing, Rod... Yep, yep, yep. So that actually ends up being kind of a free Ultra Ball almost, and has that Luminion with that Luminous Sign ability. Crushing Hammer. Is it a heads or tails off the screen? Tails, it's a tails. No. That is a big whiff. Game one and game two for Connor Fenton. Again, has to put down a Luminion to be able to search out that supporter card. Guy finds a professor's research, but again, Luminion is such a frail target that can be knocked out by something like that Arceus V Star with Trinity Nova. Very powerful effect, Luminous Sign, searching out any supporter card. Would have been great if Connor had something like a, uh, you know, a single strike mustard with a bee drill in order to uh, throw that in play since there's no other cards in hand, but also pretty good to uh, research, draw the fresh seven cards. Finds another Crushing Hammer, going to need to go for another flip here potentially. Has a plenty of energy for the next turn and a switch, but no supporters here in this hand and no outs to Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX either. Quick Ball yeah. can go get another basic Pokemon out of the deck. It has the option here to go ahead and grab the Shadow Rider V. Again, you want to get more of those Underworld Door abilities online and getting rid of some Psychic Energy, not the end of the world. But I think uh, with how I can't see the last card in hand, maybe another Quick Ball. Another Tails off another Crushing Hammer. Oh, for three so far this set. And this now opens the door up for Alberto to go for this play. It's going to be a lot easier now that you already have the energy onto the Arceus. So this is going to be a big turn here for Connor. Uh, is not playing any of those Path to the Peak because wants to utilize that Underworld Door. So that maybe is a little bit of a disadvantage comparing that to the other Whimsicott list that we've seen. Mm, sure. It looks like starting things off, we are going to see a level ball. Could go ahead and grab the Drizzile. Shady Dealing is going to be able to search out a trainer card. Plenty of options here to work with if you are Alberto. It is so easy to get Arceus V-Star into play, and it's exactly what you want to do if you're looking to use that Starbirth V-Star power. Very good to go with on this turn. I wonder if Alberto will be able to set up the same play we saw in the last game. With the Moltres in the discard pile and one in the active, it would have to be through a scoop up net most likely, could be a Clara, but most likely the net would be the option. Has another Arceus V, a bunch of cards in hand, and research will be played. Yeah, it looks like getting rid of that Clara and a, a boss's Cyrus's orders. boss's orders. So this is going to be a big seven cards here for Alberto. Needs to find a way to pivot this Moltres out and go for that play. A scoop up net would mean there is no other Moltres that needs to be found since you can just reuse that uh, again with the Malevolent Charge ability. Yep, so yep. Uh, this is going to be big. Alberto playing a little bit slower. Maybe doesn't have the pieces necessarily right away. Still has access to one more Shady Dealing's yep. ability. Has it in hand, sort of fanning it out, deciding, do I really want to play this here? Uh, so it looks like we are going to see the second Shady Dealings to be able to search out another trainer card from the deck. We could be seeing Arceus V-Star come in and play this turn. We could definitely see it, and then Starbirth can maybe piece together the other options. So if we saw that same play that we saw in Game 1, that would just be absolutely yeah. massive. A quick KO. Doesn't even have to be through the Choice Belt. Does also have Galarian Zigzagoon. Since there's no double turbo, right, there's no damage reduction. So you're dealing 200 base with the Trinity Nova plus the Zigzagoon. So there's a few different pieces that Alberto could have to pull it off, potentially. Yeah, it looks like we are going to see that Arceus V-Star come into play. With how slow things are going, I don't know if Alberto has the necessary pieces. Looks like we are going to see the Quick Ball get played. 
uh, but I believe the Crobat was prized. Uh, or for, that was for Cotter, I believe, the Crobat was prized. So, uh, looks like, yeah, Cotter having that Crobat prize. So, uh, Cotter not having access to that card here. Uh, not too many pieces here for Alberto, so it wasn't too unlikely. Like, that energy switch was still in, in the deck. It was not prized, so that was still an option. If it's in the deck, it's searchable. It's very easy to find with all these pieces. So, we are going to see that. Go ahead and grab the Sobble, get that into play. It will be able to utilize the ability next turn. There's a darkness energy. Does he have the rest of the play available? Not sure. And yo, just he's just going to have to pass things over. And now the floodgates here Big open opening. up for Connor. And this is where Shadow Mist is super powerful. You'd obviously get like to use Trick Wind, but at worst, you set your board up, you get things going. And we already see that double turbo energy as well as an Ultra Ball that may have been a big top deck here. As I think Connor's hand is just nothing. There's the Ultra Ball, a basic psychic energy, the switch, and a double turbo. And we know that that Crobat is prized, so I think Connor's play has to be to Ultra Ball away, switch and the double turbo, go get a Shadow Rider, and then you're at the mercy of Underworld Door. What does it find off of the two cards you get? Yeah, it doesn't really seem like there's any other play you can necessarily go for. I mean, you could technically find a Whimsicott V-Star and play off a top deck for the following turn, but giving yourself draw seems like the best option at this point, it seems. And yeah, you can see how painful it is. That beautiful Diamond of Pearl switch that we see, that reverse <laughs> holo. So, uh, I believe. Uh, so we are going to see the Shadow Rider VMAX get grabbed off of the Ultra Ball. And these are going to be a big two cards here off of this Underworld door. We'll be able to accelerate a Psychic Energy and draw cards. A super powerful ability. Cannot understate that. Two cards. Big two to draw for Connor. There's a Marnie. And the Whimsicott V-Star. Great two cards to find is going to disrupt Alberto's hand and seize five cards to continue to work with. Wants to find more Shadow Riders and more basic Psychics. Yeah, it looks like finds hammer. A lot hammer. of crushing oh, hammer. Oh, but nothing else. No other Shadow Rider has Fog Crystal, which could have gotten the energy, but no other attack could come off this turn besides the Astral Barrage. Let's see, is there a heads or tails there it's on heads, the finally. hammer? Nice. Finally does hit one. Let's see if Connor chooses to play the second one as well. Yeah, at this point, it looks like we are going to see the Fog Crystal. You have to play aggressive at this point. Still no fan of waves. Wants to utilize it to get the capture energy off, but unable to find either copy of those. So uh, we'll have to just go ahead and grab another Whimsicott off of the Fog Crystal. Has some energies it looks like to work with. Has access as well to that training court. But I think at this point, you really don't want to give Alberto that option. To Not right now. Draw no. some more, so. You'll probably have uh, to yeah. put it in play next turn in order to be able to use your Underworld Door. But yeah, for now, no reason to put it in play. Don't give Alberto access to that energy you just put in the discard pile. Yep, Stadium is working for both players, so either player gets access to that effect as we will see the Shadow Mist deal 10 more damage to this Galarian Moltres. But more importantly, it's going to prevent any special energies or Stadium cards from being played down. So there's, this is going to be a big turn here for Alberto. It has nothing in hand Catch here. and pass. Wow. That Marty must have been brutal from Connor. And now drawing a couple more cards and finds another Shadow Rider. Has the training court in hand. We could still see a lot more cards drawn. Yeah, with how poorly Alberto is drawing, I mean, you don't know if there's another energy in hand necessarily, but uh, this is going to allow another Underworld Door drawing two more cards. And another finds Marty. Finds a Marty as well, but at this point, it really doesn't feel like you'd like to play that when your opponent has not played much down. Uh, I think you'd like to play it if it means you can find a switching card to get off a big trick wind here. That is an unfortunate miss. Another crushing hammer tails. Connor has not had the best luck when it comes to that card thus far. Yeah, one for five in this set, one for four in this game. All four crushing hammers have been played, I believe, so uh, there are no more options. Connor looking for a switching card here. Has switch and air balloon as options in the deck. Oh, oh, four, oh, oh. five psychic energies. What is that draw? Oh, five cards off the Marnie were five psychic energies. Oh, five. What? I have to post a question. Does Max Rarity clump? <laughs> Is it true? I mean, those hollow energies, they like to find each other, it seems. That'll be great for the next turn, but it does mean that Connor doesn't do much here. Yeah, absolutely, and we do know that the energy is guaranteed, which means as long as there is a pivoting option for Alberto in that scoop up that has plenty of ways to find it, has already used that V-Star power, but a lot of these shady dealings in Teleon or Drizzile will be able to find it. That's a big open Connor, yeah. Big, yeah big that opening. is a big opening there with that level ball. We'll be able to find the third Drizzile out of the deck, and we haven't seen either scoop up net be played yet, and this miss could spell trouble. You are going to have a two-pressure knockdown, but at this point you have a lot of energy to play, and we have 
haven't brought up the Whimsicott V-Star's V-Star attack. Able to deal 60 damage for every single energy attached to it. It can be an excellent burst option right away. That Fluff Ball Star V-Star attack. And uh, Alberto's got to be careful of that because if you go for that play like he did in game one where you accelerate all these energies onto yep. the active, yep. Sure, your opponent gets special energies the next turn, but if you're wiping six six energy off the board, it 100% is worth to use your power for that. Alberto, let's see if Alberto can find the knockout here. He needs to either get a Choice Belt or the Zigzagoon, and actually discards the Zigzagoon, so that makes me think Alberto is going to go with that Choice Belt route, which is pretty solid. Has the guaranteed energy thanks to Connor's training court in hand, so or in play, excuse me. So now Alberto just needs to get the Scoop of Net in order to pull off an attack this turn and potentially get a knockout. Yeah, unfortunate that training court is there. It guarantees the attachment. But with the Inteleon, there is a high probability that any basic energy will be found. So I think the trade-off is still okay. There's a screw-up that is going to put that Galarian Moltres back into the hand. And uh, we haven't even talked about how important Galarian Moltres is later on in the game. If you can utilize that Malevolent Charge in combination with a boss's orders, once you get to that two prize, three prizes taken at that point because of the weakness on those Shadow Rider Calyrexes. There's Calyrexes. the Choice Belt. Yeah, and there is the Choice Belt. It's going to be a knockout. Alberta's going to take the first two prize cards of game number two. Let's see where these energies go. There is a benched Arceus V, so I would love to see these spread out, and Alberto agrees, puts it onto the bench. With two basic energy in the prizes, though, and a Trick Wind potentially coming up soon, it could be tough for Alberto to find a follow-up attack. It does find that Sharon's care there off the prizes. Not so, bad, not bad. Uh, if we do see something like the Trick Wind this turn, that means that it will be able to heal up and go ahead and uh, go on the bench. But at that point there, you can't uh, just say, play the Sharon's Care and double turbo it, right? Because mm -hmm. the energies will be blocked. As we do start to see the Underworld doors get powered up, it's going to be doing a lot of damage with that Max Geist. So uh, this is where we see... Uh, the big damage done, and also wants to again continuously commit energies to this shat uh, excuse me to this Whimsicott V Star because the more energies you have, the more Fluffball Star is threatening for a late game. Fan of KO. Waves, pretty solid here. Puts that uh, capture energy onto the bottom of the deck, takes an energy off of the active, and when Connor sees Alberto just accelerating one basic energy to the bench, that should be a pretty good sign that there's a chance this active. Might not even be able to attack next turn, not being able to attach a special energy. Yeah, two energy being prized is a big deal. It's even big less deal. options. And every turn you miss attacking. Look at how thin cards. Connor's deck is already. Yeah, wow. Like no cards left in the deck. That's really the power of Underworld Door right there. It really can just get you through all of your cards and get you access to what you have available. Underworld Door opens up the door for so many of these Psychic-type Pokémon to become powerful attackers because of how quickly they can become powered up, as it looks like we are going to see... Ooh! Ooh. Oh, just goes with On the Fluffball Star, knocking out the benched Arceus V to take two prizes. Connor saying, hey, this Whimsicott won't go down, and I'll just be able to get up a Trick Wind on the next turn. And yeah, by circumstances there, this is a great play because Alberto did find that Sharon's care, so a Trick Wind right. potentially could heal, and then something, some sort of ex energy acceleration play could be a potential. But uh, this is a interesting route, the Fluffball Star utilizing that V-Star power. It's not just the ability, there are very powerful V-Star attacks, and that's the great thing about V-Star Pokemon that have been released into the current Pokemon format. If Alberto can find boss's orders here and bring up the Luminion V, take a knockout with it, uh, with this Arceus, go down to just two prize cards remaining, and then if Alberto can just set up for an eventual Galarian Moltres play, that really puts the ball in their court to just close it out because of how powerful Fiery Wrath becomes as the game continues. And yeah, boss's orders, it looks like, is grabbed off of the Shady Dealings along with a pal pad. Yeah, utilizing that second Shady Dealings in Teleon to grab those two trainers out of the deck, it looks like. We are going to see the Whimsicott. Okay, that on works the bench too, yes. Yeah, Same the... thing here, yeah. Might as well target this before it can evolve. The, Whims the Luminion will always you know, have 198, uh, 170 HP, so Whimsicott can evolve out of range of a KO, whereas right now it is able to be knocked out by a Trinity Nova. Yeah, and Underworld Door currently has seven energy in place, so it is dealing 220 damage, so. Yeah, but uh, going up with that Shadow Rider feels so risky whenever Galarian Moltres just hits it for weakness. 
Yeah, I feel like at this point, with how many energies are down, you have to go for it. But at the same time, right, Clara is just game at that point. Right. You just play the Clara, you have the trading court in play. Yep, it's yep. not getting removed. And we are going to just go ahead and see the knockout onto the Whimsicott. Alberto. How does Connor want to play this? I, I think you have to go right into the... Otherwise, it's the same play, but delayed a turn, right? You just bring the Whimsicott up. Sure, you deal some damage, but you're going to get swung into. And then from there, uh, you're also technically a Inteleon ping away still from being knocked out because you are dealing... Because you have no special energy attached. You or, or double turbo, excuse me, you're dealing 230 plus the 20. But here we go, we're going to start things off with some Underworld Doors, powering the powering up these benched Shadow Rider, Calyrex V. It looks like we are going to see second Shadow Rider come down into play. There's the energy attachment onto it. Uh, there is that option, I guess, technically, to, to use Shadow Mist, but I think really just spreading the energies out, trying to get some things powered up as... Uh, it looks yep, like dealing a, more than enough damage right now with the Max Geist in order to KO this Arceus, and Alberto could close out the game on this next turn, needs to find the Clara and the Moltres and the switching card. And I think that Moltres is already in the discard pile, so that's an easy grab from the Clara. I think Connor would have really liked to have that option here. Alberto has it. Yeah, here we go. Two cards here. Alberto's going to start things off. Bring up the Intelli. That's a good sign. Maybe has the scoop up net to get things out. I think, I think Alberto has used both scoop up nets this oh, game. Oh, has he? And does only play the two copies. So that does complicate things a little bit here. Looks like eyeing up the energies already as we are going to see the Klar, it looks like, get played on the edge of okay. the screen there. So grabbing, it looks like, both Galeria both Moltres. Moltres and the Dark Energy. We'll have to Some see training court for another way. darkness. Yeah, it looks like just going to go ahead and use that first Malevolent Charge. Going to put yep. two of those Dark Energies onto that first Galarian Moltres. And the Shady Dealings. There's switching card. Is there a scoop up net still in the deck? That's the question. Do we see it? I feel like would have grabbed it right away there off that search, right? If you yeah, I didn't see it. it there. There's the other Moltres. Is there two more energy in the hand? Just the one has the energy switch to the active. energy switch for trade and the trading court will give the him the guaranteed court gets attachment. The energy back. And there it is, and Connor's gonna scoop things up. Alberto. What a play. Wow, what a play. Energy search, such a powerful card. Energy there. switch MVP winning Alberto both of these games effectively. What amazing plays, setting it up perfectly, moving the energies around exactly how he needed to, and Alberto comes away with a convincing 2-0 victory. Yeah, wow, Energy Switch was the MVP of that match. Such a powerful way to accelerate and move the energies around on the board. Very solid indeed. Congratulations to both these players. That was a very hard fought match. A little unfortunate there for Connor with those coin flips and getting excel energy accelerated out. But at the end of the day, Arceus V-Star with this Dark Type engine has a very solid early game, can apply pressure with those plays with the boss's orders being guaranteed off the V-Star power. And in addition, the best late game attacker in this game by far is that Galarian Moltres. It scales, without and without a doubt, 270 damage on a one prizer that can be powered up in a single turn and can so be combined because of a supporter card or even raw from hand is excellent. It, it's, it cannot be understated how solid this card is. Yeah, Clara is really the card that has made Moltres become so played. I think once players realized the synergy here of once the Moltres goes to the discard pile, playing Clara effectively just means get 270 damage of an attacker in play, uh, which is very good, and players have used it to their advantage. Alberto, of course, playing two copies. The energy switch plays, though, absolutely insane.